Hello friends, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to talk about what casting, conversion and parsing in Seesaw and when we can use them. We'll also see the difference among them. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Seesaw casting versus conversion versus watching. So when there is a need to convert one data type to another, then type conversion or type casting or parsing is done in Seesaw. But you need to understand the specific purpose of when to use what. So here we are going to understand these things. Okay, so we can convert one data type to another by three ways. Type conversion, type casting, parsing, right? So type conversion is done automatically by the compiler, whereas type casting is explicitly done by programmer. And parsing is something where we convert the string to primitive data type like int, sort, char, flow, double, boolean, etc. C sub type conversion. What is type conversion? Type conversion is the process by which a data type is automatically converted into another data type by a compiler. As a programmer, we don't need to do any arrangement for implementing it. So there are two prerequisites. Number one, both data types, source and target data types should be compatible. Number two, target data type should be greater than source data type. So here I have given the order of the data type from a smaller to bigger. So it will be easy for you to understand this. Okay. Here, byte is smaller than sort, sort is smaller than int, int is smaller than long, long is smaller than float, float is smaller than double. So this is the smaller to bigger order, right? Okay, let's suppose uh, this example, int i is equal to 100, double d is equal to i and double is nothing but here target data type and i is having a value of the int data type, right? So what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to do type conversion. So we are just assigning this value double D is equal to I so that the hundred value should get assigned to the double because double is a bigger data type than int, right? So this target data type would be able to accommodate the source data type easily. Okay. And of course, there is a benefit, there is a no loss of the data during the conversion because the bigger data type can easily accommodate the smaller data type value. Let's try to understand with example in Visual Studio. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. There is a class program. Inside that there is a main method which is an entry point of the application. I have written this console.write line to depict that I am depicting the CSAP type conversion demo. Okay, and here this is the commented section. I have written this thing just for the reference purpose. Okay. and int i is equal to 100 i have initialized the integer value of the i and i have assigned the value up to the 100 okay and then in the next bit i have written double d is equal to i where i am assigning the i value to the d the next statement float f is equal to i here also i am just assigning the i value to the f and all this i d and f value i am printing into the console window okay if you notice double and float are the bigger than int that's why it should able to accommodate the value of the i easily okay let me execute this program and see the output okay so here output got appear into this console window if you see the i d and f value is coming 100 because i have assigned the value of the i to the d and f and that's what it is coming d is equal to 100 and f is equal to 100 as expected let me close this. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to assign uh, this integer value to the sort. So what we are trying to do, I'm just going to assign the bigger data type value to the a smaller data type and see what happens. Okay. So let me write sort s is equal to i and semicolon. And now I'm just going to write one more is console write statement here where i'm just going to print this s is equal to right so uh, let me uh, execute this okay so it is giving me error there were build errors would you like to continue to run the last six bit i said just no okay and if you see this one error it got failed and it is saying cannot implicitly convert type into sort an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast so it is indicating me that i am missing a cast cast is nothing but the type casting okay so we will be seeing in the next section what is type casting but if you if we try to 
assign the value of the bigger data type to the smaller data type so this implicit type conversion will not work at all so we will have to go for the type casting and we will have to do it explicitly we serve type casting what is type casting type casting is the process by which we convert a large data type to a smaller size type it is done by a programmer using the casting operator if you notice casting operator we need to write target data type inside the parenthesis okay okay let's understand it with the help of example here i have defined double d is equal to 100.65553 and here what we are trying to do we are just going to type cast of the double to the int so we need to write target data type which is int over here inside the parenthesis so this d value would get converted to the i i mean the double value would get converted to the integer value but if you notice the output output got just the 100 value of the i and we got the data loss 0 0.65553 so that is the disadvantage of the type casting because we are trying to uh, accommodate the bigger data type into the smaller one yeah there will be some data loss based on the data type type casting is also done by the built-in method so if you see here double d is equal to 100.6553 and i have just used the convert dot to in 32 and we just pass this argument d that contains this value 100 per 100 point six five 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 three right and so that it will get converted to the integer value but if you notice the output got is 101 why is it so right now the double d value is just 100.65553 so whenever whenever we are going to use convert or 2 and 32 and the fraction part is above than 0 0.5 then it will get converted to one number and it will get added to the number value so 100 plus 1 is equal to 101 that's what this output got it for the i value is 101 but if you see the second example over here where double d is equal to 100.4553 here the fraction part is less than 0 0.5 so that output when we are going to get it after applying this convert dot to in 32 method the output is just the 100 because it's less than 0 0.5 so there will be no addition of the 1 to the number value and that's why the value is coming 100 but let's suppose if the fraction part is 0 0.5 then what will happen what the output this convert the 2 in 32 will give to us okay so there is a rule for that if the value is halfway between the two whole number the even number is written for example if the value is 4.5 then it is going to get converted to 4 and 5.5 which is going to get converted to the 6 why because 4.5 if we are going to convert to the 5 then it won't be have any even number so it will just keep it 4 value which is an even number in 5.5 if we are going to uh, add one more then 6 6 would be even number so it is just going to get added 1 because if we are going to keep it as a 5 which is not an even number that's what we need to add it to 1 to this whole number that's what it is coming as a 6 both are the even numbers that rule is based on the banker's rounding logic okay so here we are in visual studio so here i'm going to try to show you demo of the type casting okay so here double d is equal to 100.655553 if you notice there is a fraction part also against this double number and we are trying to convert it using the type cast okay so we need to write this type casting operator so basically int over here is the target data type and d basically represents to the double value right so we are going to convert double value to the int that's what we are writing this type cast operator because we are going to convert bigger data type to the smaller one so we need to do type casting and that's what this is the type casting operator is okay so and in the next statement i am just going to write d and i value into the console window okay let me execute this program and see the output okay output got appear into the console window if you notice over here d is equal to 100.65553 it got printed as it is and the value of the i it just got it 100 only and we lost the value of 0.655553 so that is the disadvantage 
when we are going to convert bigger data type to the smaller one okay okay let me close this okay now what i'm going to do over here is i'm just going to use this convert to int method okay so for that i'm just going to write int i is equal to convert dot to int 32 okay and then i'm just going to write d and then i'm just going to write semicolon and the same we are going to print those things into the console window okay let me execute this okay so output got appeared into the console window if you notice d value is 100.6553 but i value it got it 101 because this fraction part is uh, above than 0 0.5 right so it got converted to the 101 okay now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write less than 4.5553 and see the output okay if you notice this fraction part of the d value is less than 0 0.5 and that's what it just gave me 100 only it is not going to get added one extra to that because we just ignore that this part data loss that we are going to get it and we are going to get it 100 value now i am just going to write this 100.5 okay and see the output let me execute this okay if you notice 100.5 as per the rule banker's rounding logic if 0 0.5 we are having and it should going to get converted to the even number so 100 is the event so we are not going to get any extra number to it so it is just giving me the value of the i is equal to 100 only okay now i'm just going to write 101.5 101 which is not an event so ideally it should get converted to 102 okay let me execute this and uh, see the output okay if you notice 101.5 that is the value of the d but value of i after you know type casting it got converted to 102 because uh, 102 is the even number see some parsing what is parsing it is especially designed to convert a strings to the primitive data types like byte sort int long double etc okay so parsing can be done by two methods parse method or try parse method so if you see the example with the parse method over here we have defined five strings over there a string s1 is equal to 100 a string s2 is having the test value a string s3 is equal to 2147 48 4, s4 is the null value and a string s5 is equal to 100.25 okay and if you, if you are going to parse it using this parse method we need to write int dot parse and then we need to parse the string and here the first string i have passed so that's what i have written s1 so this int dot parse method it got parsed successfully and that's what i have just written the comment is successfully parse okay int i2 is equal to int dot parse s2 so here s2 is a test and we are s2 is equal to test value and test is not an integer value right so it will give us the system dot format exception exception error okay okay if you see int i3 is equal to int dot parse s3 where s3 value is equal to this number right and this number it is exceeding the int capacity and that's what it is throwing this error system dot overflow exception okay if you see a string s4 is equal to null and we are going to write int dot parse as 4 then it will throw us system dot argument null exception error a string s5 is equal to 100.25 so this string is having as a float number right and we are trying to convert into the integer so there is a format difference so that's what when we are going to pass in dot parse as 5 then it will throw us system dot format exception error okay if you, uh, you you are able to see so many exception we are getting if you are going to use this parse method we can avoid this type of exception with the help of try parse method so here if you notice we need to use in dot try parse s1 and out i1 so basically what we are doing over here we are taking the input string as a first input parameter and this is the second parameter which is the out parameter so it will give me the result result depends the parsing happens successfully then we will be getting the output correct output if you are not able to get 
pass successfully then we will be getting this value will be zero but if you notice over here s1 is equal to 100 which is a correct integer value right so it is able to pass correctly that's what i have written successfully passed here b1 will be the true and the i1 is equal to 100 but if you see this s2 conversion right when we are going to use in dot try parse s2 out i2 because this test s2 is having so this is not going to get passed correctly so the value of the b2 would get false and the i2 value will be zero similarly for the s3 s4 i s5 b3 b4 b5 will be getting the false and i2 value will be getting zero so wherever a string is not able to pass correctly to the end it will be having the result as a zero so here in this case i2 is equal to zero and the boolean value will return as a false value that's what we are able to see the output over here so based on the boolean value we will be deciding whether it passed successfully or not if it is passed successfully then we are going to use this result value in our program and that's what i have written this if statement b1 if it is true then go and use the value of i1 similarly for the b2 b3 b4 also we can verify and based on that we can decide whether we need to use the results or not okay there is another method convert class method by which we can convert a strings to the integers okay so how we are going to do that we will have to use this convert dot to in 32 method so we i have taken the same example over here s1 is equal to 100 s2 is equal to test s3 is equal to this value s4 is equal to null s5 is equal to 100.25 so here there will be two things the correct value correct value it is 100 so it will get successfully converted and we will be getting the value of the i1 as 100 and null value right it is having the null value of this string but it will handle the system dot argument null exception and will return the output i4 is equal to zero okay but the other like you know test or this one 214 and this one i mean the format exception and overflow exception would be thrown if you are going to use the convert dot to in 32 and the value that this string is having is not compatible so we will be getting this format exception and overflow exception right so in that case we will have to use this try parse method okay that brings me to end of my session to sum up in this video we saw what's casting conversion and parsing in csap and when and how we can use them that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video